Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K Facebook Live and today I'm going to show you how I made a card with a brand new stamp set bundle from Stampin' Up! called Warm Welcome and it is a stamp set that's available now as an early release uh, from the January to June 2023 mini catalog. So I'm excited to show you the bundle and uh, show you the little card that I made with it. It's a, a cute little bundle and um, like I said, I think it's kind of a cute little card that I made. Um, Again, it's called Warm Welcome. This is what we're making, so I'll show you in a second how I did that. Um, but let's start with the bundle. So this is the bundle. It's called, again, stamp set. It's called Warm Welcome. It's photopolymer, so you can see through it. It's for easy stamping. It's got some cute little sentiments. There's a baby sentiment in here and the little baby shoes. So there are, you know, two adult shoes and a baby shoe, which I think is kind of cute. Um, there are little hands that uh, hold, are holding mugs of something, coffee, whatever, tea, whatever you want it to be. Um, there's a little gift package, there's a kitty, there's the one that we're using today, which has got hands holding a flower. So it's a really cute set. Hey, Jeannie and Karen and Pam, thanks for joining today. And hopefully I didn't miss anyone else. I just looked up and saw that you all had hopped in. So thanks for joining today. I appreciate you being here. Um, who else? Looks like Marilyn's here as well. So great to see you. And Karen Kay is here too. So, all right. Um, so this is the stamp set. And then there's a coordinating set of dies. And they're actually really cute too. So this kind of larger outline cuts out the larger door here. And then there's a littler uh, kind of uh, outline die. And that actually will cut right inside the door frame. So that's actually how I made this um, with a little, what I thought looked like wallpaper behind it. Whether you all think it does or not, I don't know. But that was what I was going for so hey Jenny thanks for joining um then there are there's a die that cuts out the kitty one that cuts out the gifts um the ones that cut out the arms and the shoes and then these actually you can use for the sentiments or if you wanted to cut out a house number on it you could cut out the numbers and stick them on here um this one actually looks like a door obviously when you close it um like a closed door i should say not when you close it um and then there is a little door handle and this is a door knocker and um this is a little bow that you can put up in the corner of the door so it, all kinds of cute stuff uh see you should just get it and then you won't be sad <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's little hearts. Um, these, I think, are door handles. That is what I use them as, like a doorknob. Um, so that's what I use those for. And then there's one here that you can use, again, also for sentiments or, um, I don't know, something cute, whatever you want to use it for. Uh, but it's a cute little stamp and die set. And um, it will be available through uh, October 1st. And when you order it through October 1st, this bundle, you're going to get a free pack of iridescent pearl basic jewels from Stampin' Up. So that's a nice little bonus as well. So if you order it, um, you're going to get a little free something something from Stampin' Up. All right, so the other thing that I used on this card uh, is the, hopefully you can kind of see it. I don't know how, how you see it best on the screen. Um, hey, Karen, thanks for joining, and Carol as well. This is the brick and mortar 3D embossing folder. So I did use that um, to kind of give the, the appearance of a brick wall, um, like you were open the door from the outside. That was what I was aiming for when I put my card together. So, all right, so I use that. A um, couple of things to tell you about before we get going so i already talked to you about the warm welcome die and that you get the free pack of pearls uh, with that bundle if you purchase it between now and october 1st um, also if you purchase either the cottage rose or the cottage wreaths stamp set bundles now it has to be the bundle if you put in the whole suite and all that um, item you won't get it for free it has to be the bundle itself um, you get a free pack of iridescent pearl basic jewels um, stamp it up is doing a little thing for world card making day and uh, these are the stamp sets that they're going to be using and so that's a little bonus for if you purchase any of the stamp set bundles you get a free pack of pearls for them um, and you can attend the world card making day well you can attend the world card making day event no matter what um, but if you want to stamp along with stampin up on world card making day um, they're going to be making some projects with these bundles um, all right hey penny thanks for hopping in and speaking of world card making day our team is doing a uh, an event again as well ours is going to run from about nine in the morning until about nine in the evening on saturday october 1st which is world card making day and um, we are going to set up a facebook page it hasn't been set up yet so don't start hunting for it because you won't find it because it's not there um, but we're going to set up an event page uh, out on facebook and we are just going to be taking turns going live all day long sharing card making projects with you and we've got some fun little giveaways and things that we'll be 
doing as well. So again, I'll be posting all the details on my Facebook page, on my blog, in my newsletter, all over the place um, at the end of September. So don't worry, you're not going to miss out on it. So just keep an eye out for that. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. A um, couple other things, Stampin' Up! has some new dies that are available for the month of September only. Um, these are coordinate with current stamp sets that Stampin' Up! has in the annual and mini catalog. And you can get the dies that coordinate just for the month of September while supplies last. So if there are die sets on here that you're wanting, make sure you're getting them ordered very, very soon so you don't miss out on them. And there are some awesome dies, and I've been playing around with a lot of them. Um, so definitely lots of cute die sets. Uh, Get your hands on these before they go away at the end of September or before they sell out. Um, so again, the dies are only available for September. Um, the rest of the uh, the stamp sets will be available through the ends of the catalogs or however long the, the stamp sets carry forward, but the dies are only during September. So let me know if you have questions. The details for that are posted on my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com, and I will also link up the blog post for this card in the video description tomorrow so you can go and check out all the details they're all going to be posted out as well um and then stampin up is also doing weekly deals for the month of september so every week so today is the sixth i think so on the first the eighth the 15th and the 21st i have if i have the dates right i think that's what the dates are they're going to be changing out and doing new weekly deals right now there are 12 of them and they're about uh, 10 to 20 percent off on specific items and uh, you can find them out in the online store which again the details in the online store are linked up on my blog post today so go ahead and hop out and take a peek and then one last thing yeah i think that's it um is stampin up has a new um kit that will be available starting tomorrow which is wednesday september 7th it is a tag kit and it's called the christmas gifting kit it's 21 dollars again available starting on the 7th of september um and it actually has the stuff that you will need to make nine gift tags, so really pretty gift tags, as well as nine gift card holders. So they're standard issue gift card holders. So it's a pretty awesome little kit. Um, so again, kind of everything you need for tags and uh, gift cards for the holidays. So can't wait to get mine again, starting tomorrow, September 7th. Uh, again, depending on when you're watching this, it may be today. Um, September 7th, you'll be able to get a hold of this kit from Stampin' Up. So uh, Karen, Oh, the 1st, the 8th, 15th, and 22nd. I was close. <laughs> so those are the dates of the when they change out the um, weekly deals. So go take a peek at those. Hey, Sherry and Diane, thanks for hopping in. And hopefully I didn't miss anybody else while, the, while I was busy yakking. So let's get started, finally, on the card. I did some of this ahead of time so you didn't have to sit and watch me um, do boring stuff. But I've got a piece of So Saffron cardstock. This is cut to four by five and a quarter. And all the measurements will be out on my blog tomorrow, uh, which is stampwithamyk.com. So you'll be able to find the details out there um, and I will link it up in the description of the video so don't worry about you know trying to write down everything that I'm doing and all that good stuff it'll all be out there tomorrow so um, oh I'm glad you're like yeah I was excited to give it a try I got it the stamp set last week and figured I'd give it a little a little time to play with it so all right so I've got so saffron this is a piece of basic white cardstock that should be cut to three and seven eighths by five and an eighth and we're just going to adhere it to the so saffron cardstock panel with a little bit of stamp and seal all right there we go uh, next up I'm going to grab a piece of So Saffron Designer Series paper. This is from the Subtles Designer Series paper pack. And as you will note, I used a little different pattern here on the card that I made originally. So this is the plaid pattern. I used stripes because that's what I had left. So, hey Jackie, glad that you're here. So um, this is cut to about one and an eighth inches tall by three and seven eighths wide. And we're gonna use a little stamp and seal to adhere it to the basic white panels. So it should cover, if I've cut it to the right size, should cover the bottom of the panel completely. Um, if you're wanting to and you know would prefer, you can, can trim off the basic white panel, but that's just more measuring. For me, it was easier just to put the whole panel on and then <laughs> stick this one at the bottom. So whatever is easier for you. All right, uh, next thing we're gonna do is find a little bit of stamping. So I've got crumb cake cardstock and the big door image from the uh, Warm Welcome stamp set and Chrome Cake ink. And I'm just gonna ink up this stamp with Chrome Cake ink. Try to make sure I get it good and inky here and we're just gonna stamp it on the panel of Chrome Cake cardstock. And whoop, there we go. 
And you're gonna want a pretty good sized piece of cardstock for this one just because it is a little bit of a bigger image. So it looks like we got a pretty decent stamp with that. And then I'm gonna grab the dies and I'll show you the ones that I used to cut it out. So we've got this um, die, which is the one that cuts out the outline of the door. Hey, Carol, no worries, you're not really late at all. I was busy yakking early on. So, um, so we've got this one that cuts out the outline of the door. And then we have this one that will fit inside here and cut out the inside of the door. So that's how I cut mine. Um, if you don't want to cut out the inside of the door and want it to be a solid, you can certainly do that. Um, so you don't have to use both pieces, but I just chose to on mine. So I'm going to go ahead and run this through the die cutting machine over here. So I'll be off screen for a second. Hey, Denise, thanks for joining. And I should be able to get these both rolled through at the same time. So hopefully it won't take me two passes through, but if it does, it does. So, all right, just lining things up here. And since these are straight lines, I kind of need to hopefully make sure that I'm getting everything lined up straight and cut straight. Whoop, there we go. I'm gonna run it here. And hold my breath and keep my fingers crossed that I didn't line it up crookedy. All right, so there's the larger die. And this is what you're left with. There we go. All right, so let me get these on the, the die magnet here before I lose track of them. So you've got this little piece that you can hang on to for some other time. Keep it for a sentiment or something that you'll need later. And then here is your die cut door. Uh, the next thing that I did was took a little piece of the, this is Mint Macaron, again, from the Subtles 6x6 Designer Series Paper Pack. And this is cut to about an inch and a half, is that what, yep, about an inch and a half by about three inches. And it should fit almost perfectly inside this little opening. It's going to overhang it just a little bit, and that's actually what I wanted. Um, the, when I actually made my original card, I had cut the Designer Series Paper with this little cutout die, and then I realized that it doesn't fit perfectly in there. So, so I actually um, cut it just a little bit oversized for the card that I'm doing here. Um, and actually I liked the way it looked and the way it worked better than using this piece to cut it. You can use this piece if you want to, but just know that there's gonna be a little gap around the edges of it when you cut it because just because of the way the dies work. Um, so if you cut it to about an inch and a half by about three, that'll be the perfect size. And then I'm gonna grab my handy scotch tape um, because I didn't have a lot of excess uh, space around it. I didn't want to use glue or something like that and then end up with a big gluey mess. So I just took a little scotch tape and I'm sticking it down here. And since nobody can see it, it can look as ugly as it wants to be on the back. <laughs> so that's the one thing about using the scotch tape is it doesn't look pretty. But like I said, nobody can see it anyway, so it's all good. It's going to be stuck down with some stamp and seal to the card front, so nobody's even going to know that it's there. All right, so, and speaking of that, I will go ahead and um, adhere this to the, the panel with stamp and seal. Just gonna take some and run it across the whole paper here. Um, kind of try to get across the top as well and the bottom to, to make sure that I'm getting it pretty well stuck and hopefully stuck in the right spot. And then I'm gonna line this up here on my grid paper. So this is uh, right at the center of my, my panel here. Um, and I want the door to open up so that it looks like the door is centered, the opening is centered, if that makes sense, or fairly centered, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and adhere that down. Okay, next up we're gonna do some stamping of the little arm and the kitty. And I've got Tuxedo Black Memento ink here and the two images from the Warm Welcome stamp set. And we're just gonna ink them well and stamp them here on basic white cardstock. And you'll note this is just a you know crazy little scrap of, of uh, the basic white cardstock and I totally stamped the kitty upside down because I was busy yakking and not paying attention to what I should be doing. Now I've got some Stampin' Blends here and I've got kind of a stack of them. So we've got a Highland Heather, Flirty Flamingo, um, Granny Apple Green, So Saffron, uh, gray granite, which I did use that to color in just a little bit, um, a little bit around the, the 
wrapping on the flower is what I use this for. And then this is the light combo pack blends. And this is the SU-1000 and SU-900. And I use the SU-900 uh, to color the hand. But there's that whole set of skin tone Stampin' Blends markers. And you can take your pick on whatever color of the skin tone that you would like to, to color it. So, all right, so I'm starting with Highland Heather and I'm doing the stripes on the shirt. And this one, I don't even know if, oh, this is the light Highland Heather. So I'm doing every other stripe with the light Highland Heather Stampin' Blends marker. And then we're gonna do the fill in the blanks here with the dark. So it kind of gives it a tone on tone stripe. It's not really like a, I don't know, a lot different look to it, but definitely you can see there's some variation in the color. Then I've got uh, my Flirty Flamingo Stampin' Blends and I'm just gonna color in the little flower images and I'm starting with the light. And again, these don't have to be perfectly or beautifully colored. It's kind of a fun little image, so it's okay if you don't get it all perfectly done. Um, generally, I try to stay in the lines, but you know, some days that doesn't even work. All right, <laughs> so get the light, and then I'm gonna come back in here with the dark, and we're just gonna do just a little kind of swish of the dark on here. And then we're just gonna let the colors kind of blend themselves, because again, it's just kind of a fun image, so I didn't want to spend a ton of time um, coloring and blending and making it all look perfect because it's it's really not, I don't know, I didn't think it needed it. So, all right, so I've got light granny apple green and I'm just coming in here and I've colored the little leaves and then I'm drawing on the stems a little bit just to give it a little bit of a green look. And then I'll come back in here with the dark and kind of the same thing where I'm just adding a little tiny, like a, a little swish of, um, Swish, is that, that's an official word of the dark. Uh, granny apple green, just to add a little bit of variation of color on the leaves, and that's all we're doing for that one. Then I'm gonna grab my light gray granite, and I'm just gonna come in here, and I'm gonna color along the edges here of the, the little, in my opinion, or my mind, it was newspaper it was wrapped in. I don't know if it's newspaper or just regular paper or whatever. And then I'm gonna grab my color lifter, and I'm gonna kind of pull that gray granite and um, sort of blend it a little bit so it just gives it a little hint of color. That was all I wanted on there. And it, I know it's hard to see it on the video, but there's just a little hint of gray granite on it. And that was, like I said, that was kind of the look that I was going for on it. And then I've got my SU-900, um, which is part of the light uh, combo pack blends. I'm gonna color in the little hand on it. And then I'm gonna flip this around so that I can color the kitty, um, not upside down. And I've got light and dark So Saffron Stampin' Blend, so I'm starting with the light. And we're just gonna put the light all over the kitty, uh, around the edges, color in the face, color in the body. So again, you get to see my awesome coloring skills, or, or lack thereof. <laughs> and then I'm gonna bring my dark So Saffron and just do a little bit around the edges, kind of give the Give the cat a little bit of uh, dimension, color in the ears, and I think we will call that good. So that is the extent of the awesome coloring that I had to do on this. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna grab the coordinating die. So this is the one that cuts out the arm, and then this is the one that cuts out the kitty. So I'm gonna grab those, run them through the die cutting machine, and I'll be back in one second. Hopefully you are enjoying your Tuesday. It was a rainy, rainy day here in New Jersey. So, um, but I can't complain about that. We've had kind of a dry summer, so I'm glad to see a little bit of rain and hopefully we're getting a little caught up on that. All right, let's get these dies back on the die sheet and Got my little die cut pieces. I'm gonna grab some glue dots and maybe a little bit of liquid glue on this one. I'll see, see what I think I need for the arm. Probably should. Here, I'm getting ready to put it on the card I've already finished. Yep, that's not gonna work out very well. That's the one that I was looking for. All right, so I've got a glue dots. We're gonna stick um, a couple of them here on the back of the flowers. And there are two glue dots that were stuck really close together, but that's all right. All right, and I've got one over here on the edge of the, the arm, and I'm gonna put that face down so that hopefully I won't stick it to anything I don't want it to be stuck to. And then we're gonna do the same thing here with the kitty, put a couple little glue dots on the back of the kitty and put that face up. Now, 
in order to get things placed where I wanted them to be. It's pouring in Connecticut. Yeah, I know we needed it badly too, so I'm not complaining at all. And I actually don't mind a little bit of rain. It's kind of nice. <laughs> so I'm gonna place the kitty here along the edge of the door and stick the kitty down. And then the arm, because I didn't stick this down with glue, in theory, whoop, we don't want that stuck there. I should be able to, should be able to, slide my fingernail underneath the ledge of the door or the frame of the door so that the arm actually looks like it's coming out from behind the door frame rather than on the top of the door frame. So I just slid that edge of the arm right underneath the door frame and then stuck it down with the glue dots. So that's how I did it to, to make it so that it looked like the arm was behind the door and not on top of the door. Because originally when I put it together, um, I had the, the arm on the top and I'm like, well, that looks weird because it looked like it was kind of floating in the air. <laughs> So, oh, it's 101 in South Carolina. Yikes. Very humid. That does not sound very pleasant. I'm glad that is you and not me because icky. <laughs> so, all right. Um, again, I did this ahead of time. So I cut from silver foil sheets, which of course are on back order right now. So they're temporarily turned off for ordering. Hopefully you got them during celebration for free so you don't have to go hunting for them. Uh, but you can use any of the foil sheets. I just happen to use the silver one that that um, has got a little texture to it. It's a little bit of a darker silver. So if you have this, the um, silver foil, you know which one I'm talking about. And then I'm just gonna grab a glue dot and we are just gonna stick this. It fit perfectly over the top of the glue dot. So this, I should have probably told you, I cut um, with the smaller of the two circles from the Warm Welcome dies. So that's the little die that I used to cut out the door handle. There is a larger one here, um, but I thought the door handle looked a little bit better, smaller. So that was why I went with that one. All right, let me peel this off of the little sheet here and then they've obviously put a nice little door handle image here um, so you can easily you know where to put it when you go to stick your door handle on the door and that's it for that um, then I cut ahead of time a couple of these in case I messed one up so hopefully I won't mess it up but if I do I have a spare <laughs> and um, this is a little uh, kind of banner or label that is from again from the warm welcome dies this is the larger of the two banners so it's this one and um just cut it from basic white cardstock and oh i've got uh, flirty flamingo ink and the little hello sentiment and i'm going to give it a whirl stamp in it um i may have to scooch it down here just a little make sure i'm good and inky and hope that i get it on here straight and somewhat centered all right, I actually did it all right. It's, uh, it was much easier to do without the camera in the middle of me and, and what I'm stamping, but I think I got it on there reasonably straight, so we're going with it. All right, um, so I've got my little die cut uh, sentiment here. I'm gonna grab a couple of Stampin' Dimensionals. These are my half Stampin' Dimensionals. Um, if you wanted to use the minis, you can definitely do that if you prefer those. I prefer my Stampin' Dimensionals hacked in half, um, but that's my own my own choice or my own um, thing that I like on that. So yeah, you should just get it. Like I said, just get the, get the stamp and die set and then you won't be sad because you'll be sad if you missed out on it. <laughs> so, all right, so to get the sentiment centered, again, I'm putting this on my um, grid paper so that the center line is here and I've totally got that knot in the center. Six is here, 10 is here, that's what I'm aiming for. I don't, <laughs> I, don't I was way off um, by like a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna try to center this so that this is centered on the card front, not with the door, because if I center it with the door, it's gonna be scooched over too far to the one side. All right, and then I'm gonna grab a little um, rhinestone basic jewel. So, hey, Linda, thanks for hopping in from Idaho as well. So, lunchtime for you, that's awesome. And it's a cute little bundle. And hey, Julie, thanks for joining, and I'm glad you're liking my card. So I've got one of the rhinestone basic jewels. I just took one of the small ones, picked it off the sheet, and we're sticking it on here next to the little hello just to give it a little extra sparkle and a little extra bling. And that's really it for the card front. So my original card I had put on my favorite card base, which is a top folding one. So this card base is cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored across the top at five and a half. Um, but this card also works on your standard issue card base. So if you prefer the book fold ones, you can definitely do that. Um, this card base is cut to five and a half by eight and a half and scored at four and a quarter. So again, you can use whatever your preferred card base is. I know we all have our own thing and our own way that we like to do things. So um, 
That's why I try to show you that you can do it either way. You don't have to do it the way I've done it <laughs> most of the time. Sometimes there's a, sp a specific way that the card has to fold in order for things to work, but uh, not in this case. So, all right, grabbing a couple little Stampin' Dimensionals to adhere this to the card front and hopefully getting it on here right side up and centered. That's what I'm aiming for. All right, and that's it for the card front. So super easy and I think really cute. Like I said, it's a, it's a fun little stamp set and love the door on it. Um, and actually, I can't wait to use this door. I actually think that I might try to decorate that one up for Christmas. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what I come up with. All right, for the inside of the card, I kept it pretty simple as well. This is a piece of basic white cardstock cut to four inches by five and a quarter. And I've got a little piece that I trimmed away um, when I trimmed off the panel for the card front. This is uh, So Saffron Designer Series Paper from the Settles DSP Pack. And I don't know, it's probably half inch, five eighths of an inch. I don't even know that I have the exact measurement on it. This one's probably five eighths, five eighths of an inch. I think the one that I used on my other card is about a half an inch. So it just kind of depends on what I have left over for a scrap. And we're sticking that to the bottom of the cardstock panel, the stamp and seal. And then I'm going to trim away the extra here. And try not to stab myself with the scissors. And I'm going to add a little stamp and seal. <coughs> Excuse me. It looks like I had just enough to finish the card. I was wondering whether I was going to need to pull out a new one or not, but it looks like I made it. I'm going to adhere this to the inside of the card base with a little stamp and seal, fold it closed, and do the quick crease. And that's it for the card. So, Super simple and a fun little stamp set bundle. Um, definitely get your hands on it. And again, if you order it before October 1st, you get a free pack of iridescent pearls with this bundle from Stampin' Up. So yay for that. Always love getting a little something extra for free. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about anything. Again, I'll be posting all the details for this card on my blog tomorrow, and I will link it up in the description of the video so you can always go back and find all the details. Find the cardstock cuts, find the links to all the stuff that I used to create it, and, you know, all that good stuff. So uh, I will plan to be live on my Facebook page uh, next week around 2 o'clock Eastern Time on Tuesday. And then I'll be back this week Friday uh, around 2 o'clock Eastern Time on my YouTube page live. So stop by and see what we're going to be playing around with on Friday. Um, thanks again for coming in today. I appreciate you all being here. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and uh, we'll chat with you all soon.